Hi, I'm Angela Garbus, the owner of Goldenrod Pastries in Lincoln, Nebraska. Welcome to a morning at the bakery. Um, today, I am gonna be making a recipe, a couple of recipes from my new book, Perfectly Golden, Adaptable Recipes for Sweet and Simple Treats. Um, this is a book that embodies what we do here at Goldenrod Pastries, which is try to make room at the table for everybody, no matter how you eat. So we are primarily gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, and also some traditional items. But most of our customers do not need to eat that way. We just wanted to make an inclusive environment for people to enjoy treats. So Perfectly Golden is the bakery in book form. So you'll find a bunch of adaptable recipes that you can make gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, or if you don't need to eat that way or choose not to eat that way, you can make everything with all-purpose flour, whole milk, butter, anything like that. So today we're gonna to be making one of my childhood favorites, strawberry pretzel pie. It's so amazing. It sounds a little crazy, but I, I know you'll love it. it. Has a pretzel crust, a fresh strawberry filling, and a whipped coconut cream on top. We're also gonna make some apricot raspberry preserves. You can make preserves with any fruit that you have, but I just wanted to show you how simple it really can be. And it's kind of the same formula, no matter the fruit you're using. So let's get started. I'm really excited. So just before I got on here, I took a bunch of pretzels, just regular pretzels, and ground them up in a food processor to make a pretzel flour, basically. It's kind of chunky, you can see. Um, it's not a perfect flour. It does have some pieces in it. That's totally fine. And to this, we're just gonna add, get my recipe with me. We're gonna add three tablespoons of sugar, just regular granulated sugar, and five tablespoons of coconut oil. The great thing about coconut oil is that it's a liquid at room temperature, and then when you um, refrigerate it, it becomes hard really quickly. So we'll do one, two, three tablespoons of sugar. Those pretzels are really salty, um, which I love. And you're gonna have these super sweet, sweet strawberries. You're gonna have the sweet coconut whipped cream. And then we add a little bit of sugar just to balance it out. And then our coconut oil. This is also a great recipe to make in the summer. And it's something that um, I grew up having in the Midwest. I think it's a traditional kind of Midwest thing. Um, and you don't have to turn on the oven. There's a little bit of work on the stove, but not much. Um, this crust just sets in the fridge or freezer and it's good to go. So, it's basically like wet sand. It reminds me of graham cracker crust. Um, I'll show you. And once that coconut oil refrigerates and hardens, you're gonna have a nice crust. And this isn't gonna be a crust that like you cut perfect slices of. It's gonna be just kind of like a rough crust that you take like a big spoon and serve it to people. So I'm just using um, a, an aluminum pipe dish to demonstrate this for you. I would usually use a bigger pie pan and I'll show you that one in a little bit. So we have a little bit extra crust. Okay. So I just pressed this down. It's gonna be a little bit loose. That's fine. That coconut oil is gonna set up in the fridge and it'll be great. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge while we get going on our preserves. I'm a big fan of adding salt to everything that I make. So in all of my recipes, you'll see me adding salt. Um, but we did not need to add any salt to this recipe because the pretzels are already pretty salty. So yes. Okay, we are gonna make some apricot raspberry preserves. We have these beautiful, beautiful frog hollow um, apricots from Melissa's. They're so beautiful. I Every year when apricots come out, I am so excited and I'm so overwhelmed by how beautiful they are. Um, one of my favorite things that we make at the bakery and the recipes are perfectly golden as well is our crumble bun. And that's a traditional yeast dough, a sweet roll dough. We um, roll it out and fill it with fat and, and sugar like you would a cinnamon roll, which is just without the cinnamon. And we roll it up like a cinnamon roll 
slice it into swirls like a cinnamon roll, and then you let it rise for the first time. You punch down the center and you fill it with preserves. My favorite crumble bun that we've ever made, and we've done it with, you know, 10 plus different um, fillings. My favorite has been with an apricot preserve. It is like a little tart, sweet, it's really incredible. So I'm gonna get started cutting these up. Gotta find my knife. And the great thing about preserves is that you don't have to be super, super exact. Um, it's a great thing to do if you, and these just like come apart, they're so amazing. I love that when they just come away from the pit like that. It's a great project if you're like, hmm, I have this fruit that's about ready to go bad, what do I do with it? Um, and that's when we make preserves at the bakery, that's when I make preserves at home if I know that I can't get through all the fresh fruit. Um, it's a great use for that. And also, you'll see when I get chopping these that it is so easy and so fast. I was really concerned when I first started making jams and preserves that maybe I wouldn't make it right, maybe it wouldn't set up quite right, maybe I wouldn't have the proportions right, but you're working with really wonderful fruit and as long as you follow kind of some basic steps of like the way that you're cooking it and the way that you thicken it, if you do need to thicken it, um, you're going to have a lot of success. So I'm a big fan of making preserves. We all, About once a week we go through the fridge at Goldenrod and we say, okay, what needs to be used? and what can we do with it. Um, all right, so I have my halved apricots and really I'm just gonna roughly chop them up. This is not something that needs to be super exact. I really like when I'm making um, stuff like this, like preserves, I really like to have irregular shapes and sizes. I'm keeping the skin on. I think that apricot, stone fruit especially, that peel, that skin, is so delicious and especially apricots i feel like it's just really um it's tart and it's amazing so that's something that we definitely want to keep plus we like to keep food waste down at goldenrod and in my life and i think that we're all kind of working towards that so just keep it on it's delicious this adds texture okay so these are all super rough i'm just gonna pop these in my pot over here There are exact measurements in the book, but I am doing it by eye with you here today because I want to show you how you can do that at home. Do these beautiful raspberries. Honestly, berry season, stone fruit season is the best time of year. These are so, so gorgeous. They're like firm, um, Melissa sent these as well. They're so beautiful. I'm going to dump a container in here of these and I think I'll show you what my pot looks like right now. Kind of a big pot. Um, I'd really like to cover at least the bottom of the pan and so I'm gonna add some more apricots. So this strawberry pretzel pie that we're making, um, it's a, I think it's a very Midwest thing. As the books come out and as I was working on the recipes and talking to people about it, I realized that it's not super common to, to have a dessert like this. And my mom helped a lot with the book as well. Um, we spent a lot of time baking together, we still do. And um, she said, you're putting a strawberry pretzel pie in the book. I just wanna show you here. There's, just to interrupt myself for a second. There's one apricot, it's a little soft on top. Totally fine, definitely use those. Um, there's nothing wrong with this, so definitely use it. Um, I said I'm putting a strawberry pretzel pie in the book and she was like, what is a strawberry pretzel pie? And I was like, well, you made it. We had it growing up. It's so good. And she's like, I never made a strawberry pretzel pie. So then like all of my memories of my whole childhood like went flashing before my eyes and what had I gotten, what else had I gotten wrong? And she was like, it was a salad. And I was like, I'm sorry, a salad? This is dessert. It has a crust. It has cream. Um, the original recipe has um, like cream cheese. I was like, how is that a salad? She's like, I don't know, Angela, but it's a salad. Um, and I said, okay, well, my memory is that it was a dessert. So for our purposes, we have made the Nebraska classic, the Midwest classic strawberry pretzel salad into a strawberry pretzel pie. Um, where's everybody tuning in from today? Love for you to just like pop down below in the comments and 
let me know where you are. If you've ever had strawberry pretzel salad or strawberry pretzel pie, um, I'd love to hear your experiences. It's been fun as like the book comes out to talk about um, regional specialties like the strawberry pretzel pie, what other regional specialties have come out. So definitely chime in, let me know what you what you loved growing up with. Oh, I lost an apricot, a couple apricots, I'll grab them. Okay. So for me, I feel really good about how this looks. Mostly apricots, some raspberries, it's gonna be great. I have this handy dandy induction burner that we will use here. Um, also in this recipe, we add a half a cup of brown sugar, about a half a cup. My cup measures, we'll use this. About a half a cup of brown sugar, depending on how sweet the apricots are. Always taste. They're so good. Add a little bit more. And just to get it started, I'm gonna add a little bit of water. I'm gonna keep an eye on this, it's right next to me. Um, this is something that you don't really want to like walk away from. Okay, we're gonna watch that there. Get rid of my pits. Okay, we have our preserves going. We're gonna get back to the pie. So the next thing that happens for the strawberry pretzel pie is the filling. And I spent a really long time as well, this is kind of a fun story, um, trying to figure out, I didn't chop my strawberries while I'm telling you about this. I spent a long time trying to figure out what would be a really good vegan gel for this because I remembered it as kind of almost like um, strawberry set in strawberry jello. And so I was like, how can I do this? But I don't want to use gelatin. Um, I tried making like a pectin gel and I tried all these ways. I really wanted it to be vegan um, for the book. And I'm at home at my parents' house working on the book, talking about different things with my mom. And I was like, I just am having a really hard time figuring out this vegan gel. And she's like, well, Angela, <laughs> she always says something like that. She's like, well, Angela, you know, I just use like a cornstarch gel. And I was like, a cornstarch gel? You've gotta be kidding me. Um, and she wasn't kidding. And so I used her tip once again. And it's a really cool slurry that you make with um, water, sugar, a little red food coloring. And you have so much flavor from these strawberries already. It's beautiful, beautiful strawberries. Like we wait all year for strawberries to look and taste like this. Um, and you have so much flavor from the strawberry already that you really don't need to, um, I'm just gonna crank that up a little bit, um, that you don't need to add a lot of other flavor in there. And there's a lot of tartness from strawberries as well, so I just feel like we don't need to add lemon or anything like that, and it's super delicious. All right. So I hope that you are chiming in in the comments and letting me know about your childhood favorites. Um, things that, you know, for me, when I became, so I'm gonna tell you, I'm just taking the tops off of these strawberries and I'm gonna quarter them. So they're gonna end up just being little, little chunks like this. Um, in 2014, I started my business as a blog. It was called Golden Round Pastries as well. And I started it because I, had been trained in French pastry. I'd been working in kitchens, professional kitchens for, you know, 15 years um, using traditional ingredients. And in 2014, 2013, as a person who had always had like a little bit of, this is kind of a bigger one, that's a big bite. I try to think about like, what can I take a bite of in one bite? That's a big strawberry. I'm gonna cut it in half again. Um, I realized that, you know, I couldn't ignore my dairy sensitivity, my dairy allergy anymore, and I really had to cut it out of my diet. And so that's fine, that's all fine and good, um, but that meant that there were a lot of treats that I had always had my whole life that I couldn't have anymore, or 
I felt excluded at dinner parties or going out to dinner, you know, you don't want to be that person who's like, well, I really want that, but can you do it this way? It just like was very overwhelming to me. I still do it, but you know. And so I had to basically teach myself how to bake all over again. And so I started a blog so that I could kind of tell the stories of how I was doing this and share recipes. And so I shared recipes. I used social media to tell people about what I was doing. I didn't really have any followers. And um, if you go far enough back in the Goldenrod Pastries Instagram feed, it's actually just pictures of my dogs from 2013. Um, and so I just wanted to tell people about what I was doing and see if anybody cared. And what I found were there were so many people who had similar issues with dairy or with gluten or with eggs, whatever. There's a guy who contacted me or his wife did and said, my husband's 35, Valentine's Day's coming up. He's, he has celiac disease and he hasn't had a donut since he was six years old. Can you help me? I'm like, okay, I don't know if I can. I've never really baked gluten-free to begin with, um, let alone as a donut. Um, so I, said yes <laughs> and that was the kind of the story of what, how goldenrod came to be i just said yes to all of these people who said i haven't had my kid has never had a birthday cake i haven't had um donuts and i feel as a chef our first obligation our first love is to feed people and so i wanted to find a way to do that and goldenrod opened about a year after i started the blog and we had just celebrated five years so that is our little story. Okay, I will kind of show you what is happening in here. Um, my is very liquidy at the bottom. Things are starting to break down. It's becoming like a really nice kind of pinkish color. There's a lot of liquid in the bottom, super great. I'm gonna flip this to the back burner. My favorite a kitchen accessory that I have gotten recently is a double-decker induction burner. I love it. So we'll turn on the back, we'll keep an eye on this, and keep going with our pie. All right, so we have all of our strawberries, nice and cut, they look great. And the next step is to make that kind of cornstarch gel, that slurry that's gonna bind our pie together. Um, and the way we're gonna do that, we have a cup of water, super easy we have three tablespoons of cornstarch you i cannot tell you how long i labored over figuring out how to make a vegan <laughs> gelatin for this pie i'm sure there's a really obvious solution and somebody who's watching this right now is like oh well you should have just done this okay well please any suggestions for a vegan gelatin for a situation like this, a pie like this, just tell me in the comments because you will help me sleep at night. Um, so I, you might have heard and seen that I just turned down my ap apricot preserves. So cooking is very sensory. I heard them bubbling a little bit faster than I would really like. And so I know that I want to turn down the power a little bit. If you have a gas stove, electric stove, just take that from a medium to a medium low. We're not in a huge hurry. We want the apricots to break down, the raspberries to break down. We want them to kind of take on some of that sugar, take on each other's flavors. And um, we just want like a slow little bubble. And I like some chunks in my preserve, so I don't want fully broken down fruit. Okay, you're probably wondering, is she ever gonna do anything with this slurry? All right, since I waited, it's kind of stuck to the bottom a little bit. We're also going to add three quarters of a cup of sugar to this. Just granulated sugar. Half a cup and three quarters of a cup. All right. So I like to add a little red food coloring. I think that it's not quite as appetizing if you don't do that. Um, if you have a dye allergy or prefer not to use it, you can absolutely use um, some beet powder. You could use natural food coloring. What I have at the bakery is just classic gel food coloring. So I did a couple of drops of that and we'll kind of see how it looks. I can always add a little more. 
I think that looks really nice. So with a cornstarch gel, you have to hydrate the starch first in cold water. So this is cold water. Um, it won't become a gel if you just add cornstarch to hot water. It'll just seize up in balls and nothing will ever happen. So we're going to use the same method with the preserves in a little bit. Um, but when you're making a cornstarch gel, you always need to hydrate in um, room temp or cold water first. So I just have a little saucepan here. I'm going to pour this in. Now that the, the starch is hydrated, we can heat it and make our gel. So I'm going to turn this on a little low. I love this double burner induction. We just opened a second location a, a couple months ago and had to totally revamp this kitchen and we have very limited space. So we lost our stove, our gas stove top and this double decker induction burner has been a lifesaver. Okay. My preserves are still just bubbling. I'm gonna turn them down a teensy bit. They're probably at low now. The thing about the cornstarch gel is that you need to whisk it constantly, especially with a small quantity like this and a very powerful burner like this, you are going to see it, um, gel really quickly and if you don't whisk the whole time you're gonna get lumps and I'm not a huge fan of that so again I know I talked about adding salt to all of your pastries it brings out the flavor of everything um, I'm a big believer in that but remember we're not gonna add it to the strawberries we're not gonna add it to the slurry um, this gel because we have that pretzel crust and there's a ton of salt in that already so we just need to sweeten it up and go from there okay wow these apricots look so good i love 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 this recipe in the summer it's getting so hot here um and it's already hot outside and it's not not the end of the day yet um it's so hot here already but i don't have to turn the ovens i don't have to heat up the kitchen it's such a relief so everything's kind of dissolving. It's starting to get warm. I'm gonna turn it up. Now that the, the starch has dissolved, I'm not worried about it like fully seizing up. So I'm turning it up a little bit. And I'm just whisking constantly. My preserves, I can see, are still like, they're on low heat, medium low heat, and they're just like a slow bubble every second or two. It's not like rapid, it's just nice. And this is such a beautiful color. Um, I didn't mean to color coordinate, but I'm happy that it worked out. The coconut cream is the last step to this pie and is my personal favorite. When I stopped eating dairy, um, I really miss that like unctuous cream taste and feeling that you get in your mouth. And um, when I realized that I could use coconut milk to make a nice cream, that was like it for me. I thought it was better than um, using heavy whipping cream and I'm, I'm excited for you to see it. Okay, so this is like starting to become a gel. It's bubbling. You can see that like this opaque color of, I'm gonna turn it off to cook it the rest of the way. The opaque color of, um, of the slurry is becoming a clear, gel and I will show that to you. You can kind of see I have some opaqueness around the outside and it's starting to gel and become clear in the center. This is exactly what I want. When you're looking at this kind of opaque cornstarchy mess at the beginning it's like oh my gosh this is never gonna be a beautiful pie. What is she thinking? I don't need this anymore. Um, I get it, I've thought that too, but it becomes a really beautiful, clear pink or red gel. All right, so you can see super beautiful gel. Okay. I'm gonna flip my preserves. I like having them close to me and now that I have the burner down, pop it down here. Okay. 
keeping it real low. All right. This beautiful gel is just gonna go all over these strawberries. I love this. It's such like a comforting, kind of old fashioned looking situation. And now you just fold it around the strawberries. And your pie is pretty much done at this point. And the whole time our pretzel, this is good, I'm gonna turn this off. Um, the whole time that we've been making the preserves, chopping the fruit and making this um, gel, our pretzel crust has just been sitting in the fridge. So I'm gonna grab that. You can absolutely use a bigger pie dish. Um, whatever you have is great. And so the crust, it hasn't been sitting too long, so it's not gonna be fully firmed up yet. So I'll use some care when I'm putting in, um, when I'm putting in the strawberries to not disturb the pretzels. You just pile this in evenly around the sides. Make sure you get everything out of there. In my kitchen, I'm always reminding my bakers, make sure you clean out your bowls. Because that stuff that's left, it adds up. So always use a rubber spatula, clean out your bowl. That is a kitchen, professional kitchen chef tip from me to you. Okay, perfect. So we have this beautiful gel. We have this beautiful strawberry situation. It's so gorgeous, so shiny. I love how shiny this is. Um, it's something that really, like you can take this to a picnic, to a party. It's something that really looks very elegant and very retro, but also, um, when you garnish it with like some whole pretzels on top, it's very modern. I'm gonna pop this back on the fridge. We're gonna finish our preserves and we're gonna finish our coconut cream. Okay, preserves look incredible. The way that you finish any preserve is with cornstarch. We are going to use recipe calls for about five tablespoons of starch. This looks nice, pretty nice, so I'm gonna use about two. And it already looks really thick, so I don't want to, um, I don't wanna make it overly thick. We have these beautiful Meyer lemons um, from Melissa, which is always like such an exciting thing to be able to use Meyer lemons. It's not something that like I treat myself to all the time. We don't use them a lot in the bakery, so it's a real treat to be able to use it. It's not a super, acidic lemon flavor. It's just really, really nice. We're gonna use my favorite juicer. You're gonna get a lot of juice out of these. I think it's great. So we're gonna make a same kind of like slurry that we made before for our strawberry pie, but with lemon juice. And this really brightens up the flavor of the preserves. Okay, so we have two lemons. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Okay. You can do this at home with a whisk and a bowl. This is what we do at work. We just put it a lid on a container and we shake it up. We get that starch fully dispersed. I'm gonna turn this on a nice low, medium low. And I will show you what these preserves look like at this point. The apricot's really broken down. Um, it's just really beautiful. I'll put some in a little bowl so you can see it after. I am going to add in my starch, my starch and lemon juice and water. Turn it back on. And just like the strawberry um, gel, you're gonna stir this constantly until it has thickened. And so our last thing that we need to do is make a coconut cream. 
and it sounds a lot more complicated than it really is. We're just gonna strip off um, the liquid from a container of full fat coconut milk and smash up the cream. Add a little bit of vanilla bean, which I'm super excited about. And there you have it. I wonder what kind of fruits are getting to be local and available wherever you are. Again, let me know where you are in the comments, what you've been baking, um, if you've been spending more time at home, what you have there, and um, what you're excited about making. Okay, so this is done. It's um, been boiling, thickening. I'm really happy with the way it looks. I'll put some into a little cup for you to see. So, whoop, super beautiful apricot preserve has a little bit of has a little bit of movement to it but overall is really nice and thick. So you can use the same method with um, any fruit that you have at home. And I hope you have a lot of success with it. I love it. When I started making preserves I, and realized how easy it was, I just wanted to make preserves out of everything. Okay, so I'm gonna open these cans of coconut milk and dump off the liquid. Okay, so you'll see that you have this really um, firm layer of coconut milk on the top. So that's like the fatty part. That's the part that we want, the part that we love. So I'm going to, I've run out of all of my pencils. I'm going to use a spoon, super hard layer, and you can just scoop all of this out. But be careful because you're gonna to start to get to the liquid and we don't want the liquid exactly. What do I mean by the liquid? I'll dump this out so you can see it. Coconut water. So we get rid of that. And we have another container. This one's a little bit firmer. Get out all of our coconut water. Sometimes I like to make a little hole in the coconut milk and dump out the water so that I can just scoop out the rest of the fat easily. All right, you can use a mixer at home if you'd like to smash this up and make it a nice consistency. Or um, I am today gonna just use a fork. So we're just gonna mash up this cream. And I promise you guys, you really don't need sugar in this. We have the super, super sweet strawberries we have that salty crust and all we really need is like some fatty creaminess. So that is where this comes in. If you use a mixer, a paddle attachment is gonna work great. The only thing that I ever really like to add to my coconut cream, depending on the use for it, is like a little maple syrup or in this case, we're gonna add some vanilla bean that I think is gonna be like really, really good. Okay. Melissa sent these really nice vanilla beans, which is also like those Meyer lemons, such a fun thing to be able to use. And I know that in my home kitchen, I don't always use them, but I love having them. Um, all right. Vanilla beans, when you split these open, just go down the center with the tip of your knife. Open it up, take the back side of your knife, and I think we're just gonna use one of the vanilla beans today. And then when you get these vanilla beans, they're such a luxury, definitely put the pod in um, your vanilla extract container. You can put it in um, a container of sugar, like if this container of sugar were full, put your vanilla bean in it and make vanilla sugar, it's so good. Um, so I'm just gonna mix this up into the coconut cream. When we have this, we're gonna have two pies now to share at work today. And I made one of them with gluten-free pretzel crust for my gluten-free girls and I am just so excited. Okay, let me grab my pie. 
So I made this pie so it could set up um, in this cute pie dish. Super shiny, everything's set, and I feel good about adding my coconut cream to it. So you'll wanna let it set for maybe like an hour in the fridge. My gosh, this looks so good. I'll show it to you here. It's like just a super rich cream and it is dotted with vanilla beans. I'm super, super excited about this. All right, the pièce de résistance. I like to make a nice dollop in the center You can use the back of your spatula to spread it out. Maybe you can make like a nice little swirl in the center if you want. I think this is such a fun, like I said before, kind of retro dessert. Um, and I think that it is such a fun thing to make in the summer. Whoops, I might have to eat that bit. Um, it's such a fun dessert to make in the summer. Um, especially with fresh strawberries when your your kitchen's really hot, you don't need to turn anything on. My strawberry pretzel pie from Perfectly Golden. Um, we also made some amazing apricot raspberry preserves. I hope that you love these recipes. I hope that you check out my book. You can follow us on Goldenrod Pastries, at Goldenrod Pastries on Instagram. And um, I wish you a very, very happy day and wonderful baking.